So one of the ways in which we initially recruited people with mirror touch synesthesia is that we contacted our database of synesthetes saying, here's a new thing that we've come across, does anybody else have this? And we started getting replies from them saying, yes, I have this. And then I would reply to them and say, well, that's very interesting, but why didn't you mention it before? And the response was, well, I thought it was normal. I thought that everybody has this and it's not something that's special to me. I didn't think it was a type of synesthesia because I assume that everybody experiences touch on their body when they see touch to somebody else. So unless your own internal experiences are kind of challenged or, or questioned by other people saying, no, I don't see it that way, you assume it's normal because to you it's a very private thing. So people often wonder how people with synesthesia, you know, live with all these extra things going on. And if you pose that question to a synesthete, what they will say is, well, for me, it's just perfectly normal. I've always lived with music being visual as well as auditory. Uh, and to some extent, they develop strategies for tuning it out. But uh, so they don't necessarily pay attention to it unless they particularly want to. So it might always be there, but you can tune it out in the same way as if you're having a conversation in a busy street, there's always the background noise, but you learn to tune it out. So all of our sensory worlds are very cluttered uh, with inputs, but we just find ways uh, of disentangling them and deciding what it is we want to attend to. And people with synesthesia are just doing that, but they have an extra thing to, to tune out or tune into.